Good morning and welcome to First Methodist Church on this super cold Sunday. So if you guys would stand up as we worship, we're going to sing Lion. Baby 
on mountain be made low. Amen. You guys may be seen. Amen. Good morning, church. Second Sunday of the new year. How many of you are two for two? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Great job. Nobody over here two for two this year? Okay, there we go. Nice. All right, nice. Welcome to First Methodist Church. My name is Hayden. I'm the youth pastor here. I also serve on our preaching team. I'd like to welcome you all to First Methodist Church. Uh, as you came in, you received this bulletin. Uh, on the bulletin is a QR code where you can find the real bulletin, uh, find all the announcements, uh, the order of services in there as well. Uh, you can also put your name and some information on this. This is our Connect card. This is how we know that you're uh, in church this morning. And you can place it in the offering bag as we pass those on later in the service. Uh, also, we have a time for prayer later in the service, and so if you have any prayer requests that you'd like the church to be praying for with you, uh, you can send them in to the number on the screen, uh, or you can write them down on the prayer cards that are on the chairs in front of you. Uh, but as we continue in worship today, would you stand with me? Lord Jesus, we're so thankful for your presence. We're so thankful that you fill this place. God, what an opportunity it is to gather as your church and worship you, knowing that churches all over the nation, all over the world, are doing the same thing this morning in all time zones, Lord Jesus, worshiping you. Father, I pray that our worship would continue on through the week, that it wouldn't just be a Sunday thing, that we'd we wouldn't just be Sunday Christians, but we would be everyday Christians following after you and what you have for us. Because Lord, you promised to give us life and life abundantly. And Jesus, we want to step into that this morning. Proclaim your goodness. Proclaim your name. God, you're so good. Thank you for your love. And we love you. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Alone in my sorrow and dead in my sin. Lost without hope and no place to begin Your love made a way to let mercy come in When death was arrested and my life began Ash was redeemed, only beauty remains. My orphan heart is given a name. My morning grew quiet, my feet rose to dance. When death was arrested, my life began. Oh, your grace. Oh, your grace. So free. Washes over.
displayed on a criminal's cross and darkness rejoiced as though heaven had lost to the marriage of the Lamb to come and worship Him celebration it's the joining of the bride and the Son to becoming one all the prophecies fulfilled in a moment, so we see, like the roar of a many waters, like the sound of a rolling thunder.
We'll shout to the whole world hears it. We'll sing till the whole world knows. King Jesus, He is faithful. He is a blessed one. We'll shout to the
portion and he is our prize drawn to redemption by the grace in his eyes if grace is an ocean we're all sinking so heaven meets earth like an I'm going to invite the uh, leadership board, the new leadership board, to come forward at this time. You guys are all back there standing up. Nice. Great. Uh, just over the, for those of you who feel a little bit out of the loop, uh, for the past several months, almost the past year, as we've been um, disaffiliating and affiliating with the GMC and kind of changing different structures, one of the structures that we've changed is we've gone from a multi committee system to a one board system. And so our church used to have, what was it, five different committees, right? Something like that. Uh, and we've put that into one committee, and you're looking at the one committee. This is the leadership board, so yes, yeah. Now we've got Carson Gerber, we've got Pat Williams, we've got Katie Stewart, we've got Dan Posey, here we go. We've got Kimberly Dudley, we've got Misty Miller, we've got Bob Lee, we've got Thomas Hunt, and we've got Joe Lombard. It's so hard to remember names in front of people. <laughs> but how about that? How about that? This is our leadership board. Uh, they will be meeting throughout uh, the year. They'll be discussing uh, the direction of the church. Uh, they'll be leading our church. Um, a huge part of that. And we're so thankful that you guys are uh, doing that and stepped up to the call. Uh, and so this, really, during our prayer time, we're going to be doing what's called a commissioning. And we'll be commissioning this leadership board to uh, do their job. Uh, and so they'll be making a vow in front of each and every one of you, and, and you guys will kind of be making a vow in front of them as uh, we come alongside them as they make leadership decisions uh, and, and we move forward as a church. And so it's something that's really exciting. Uh, so let's, let's do this. Dear friends, you have been called by God and chosen by the people of God for leadership in the church. This ministry is a blessing and a serious responsibility. It recognizes your special gifts and calls you to work among us and for us. In love, we thank you for accepting your obligation and challenge to, you, to offer your best to the Lord, to this people, and to our ministry in the world. Live a life in Christ and make him known in your witness and your work. Today, we install these names. Uh, do you, uh, board, this day acknowledge yourself a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ, do you? Will you devote yourself to the service of God in the world, will you? Will you so live that you enable this church to be a people of love and peace, will you? Will you do all in your power to be responsible to the task for which you have been chosen, will you? Let us pray. Almighty God, pour out your blessing upon these, your servants, who have been selected to our leadership board. Grant them grace to give themselves wholeheartedly in your service, 
Keep before them the example of our Lord, who did not think first of himself, but gave himself for us all. Let them share his ministry and consecration, that they may enter into his joy. Guide them in their work. Reward their faithfulness with the knowledge that through them your purposes are accomplished through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, dear friends, you, the church, rejoice that God provides laborers for the vineyards. Will you do all you can to assist and encourage them in the responsibilities to which they have been called, giving them your cooperation, your counsel, and your prayers? Will you, church? Amen. Let's welcome our leadership board. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. As they're uh, moving back to their seats, if you have served on a committee, uh, 2022, 2023, if you served on any one of those committees, would you just stand up right now so that we can recognize you? Yes. Awesome. Great. Yeah. Amen. 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 Thank you all so much. I'm, I'm excited for this new change and uh, to see what the Lord does through our leadership board. Uh, now, does anyone have any prayer requests that I can pick up? Yeah. Is it in Morse code? No. Okay, good. Whew. Jack filled out his Connect card in Morse code today, so <laughs> crack me up. Any other prayer requests for falling back here? <laughs> awesome. Uh, today is Silas's birthday. Or Silas. Happy birthday. It's awesome. How old? 15. That's wild. Okay, good deal. Uh, we already sung to him this morning, so we don't have to sing again. Unless. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, got a prayer request here, if I can open it. This one says, God is working in my life to bring me closer to him. Prayers for peace and comfort as we go into this next week. Prayers for peace and humility as we go into this next week. We'll be praying for this specific person here. Yeah, thank you. Yes. A continued prayers for Wiley Harp. Um, amen. We'll be praying for Wiley Harp. Yes, thank you. From Jack, uh, prayer request for his son. Uh, knee replacement on... Monday. We'll be praying for Jack's son during this prayer time. Thank you. Yes. This is a prayer request for all staff and uh, teachers going back uh, for the new semester and finish out the spring semester. Who will we be praying? Do what? Amen. In Jesus' name. Who will we be praying for our teachers and staff? Yeah. Thank you. We need that. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. I'll leave some time for you to pray, and that time is for you to pray. Uh, so I'll close this out. Yes, Lord, hear our prayers. even as we continue praying in this moment. Lord, we lift up our church brothers and sisters to you, uh, the ones that are hurting, the ones that are in recovery, Lord, the ones that need surgery. Lord, we ask for your healing hand to come upon them, your peace, Lord, for them and their families. God, we're so thankful that you our God who hears us and answers prayers, it's just something that I can't get over, Lord, that you hear us. God, that we can come and speak with you and talk to you. And you communicate back, Lord. I pray that you would continue to speak to us and guide us with your Holy Spirit in this place. Lord, guide us in all uh, strength when we are weak for this new semester. Lord, 
Lord, I pray that you would teach us this next semester the depths of these gifts of the Spirit, like peace, like joy, even patience, Lord. We just need more of your Spirit. We ask for it in this time, Lord. Lord, would you give us more of your Spirit? God, all praise to you. All praise to you because you are King of kings and Lord of lords. Creator of it all. And you love us so much. Scripture says you think about us. That you sing over us. What a beautiful image. What a beautiful truth. Thank you, Lord Jesus. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm going to invite all the children to come forward for children's time. You got a newspaper. All right. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. Welcome. How's everyone? Good? Are you awake? Almost. Aaron's almost awake, he says. It is cold out. I kind of wanted you to stay home in bed, right? Yes, but I knew I needed to be here. We're going to talk about living a life close to God. First, I'm going to read Genesis 126. It says, Then God said, Let us make human beings in our image to be like us. They will reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the wild animals on earth, and the small animals that scurry along the ground. Okay. Do y'all know what this is? A bouncy ball? Play-doh or putty? Okay. If I would have brought what I had this morning, but I gave it to a kiddo because they didn't believe that it would actually work on a newspaper, um... It was pink this morning, and it came in a red egg. What is it? Um, it's Silly Putty. It's Silly Putty. And when I was a kid, I loved to play with Silly Putty. Yeah. We could roll it up in a ball like this, and it will bounce. And it will bounce really high. You can stretch it out. It's Silly Putty for a reason. You're right. But also... You can do something else with it that I think is amazing. If I hold this, this silly putty, Erin, will you hold the mic up close to my mouth for me? Real close. Like up here, because I can't hear. So if I hold this silly putty out here, I can get an image. You think I can? Right here? I think it's silly, like this. But let me show you. If I put this silly putty really, really close to this newspaper. Hold on, I'm going to show you. you to press hard, press hard. And this isn't pink, so it's hard. The image, you got to look close because the light up here. The image comes out on the putty. You see it? Well, kind of. Can you see it? It's the letters. Yeah. It looks like Play-Doh. Yes, it does. And let me tell you guys, if y'all don't know how difficult it is to find a newspaper these days, you can't. I didn't have one in first service, but BJ and Mel came through for me. When I was a kid, in our Sunday newspaper, you would open it up, and there would be a huge section of comics. And they would be in color. They wouldn't just be in black and white. They'd be in color. And I would take my silly putty, and I'd press it down really, really close, and the image would come back on the silly putty. And I just thought it was amazing. So I have a question for you guys. If we know God from a distance, like way over here, from the distance, we're holding it way back from the newspaper, are we close to him? Are we showing people? No, that we're close to God. But if we live our lives really close to the Lord, like pressing down, shaking all over, are we living our life for the Lord? Yes. Are the people around us going to see it? Yes, they're going to see it because they're going to see it through us. 
So I have a question for you. If we only live from a distance, we will never, ever get close, and the people around us won't see it. But if we are living our lives really, 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 really close to the Lord and doing the things the Bible tells us to do, everyone will see us in God's image. So how are different ways, each and every one of you tell me, what's a different way that you stay close to the Lord? By praying. Praying. Anybody else? Praising. Praising. Anybody else? Praising the Lord. Praising the Lord. Worshiping. Worshiping. How about reading your Bible? Yeah, that's a great way. So I think we should, con- what's up, Casey? Um, be kind. Be kind. Yeah, be kind to other people. So should we do this on Sunday mornings only? No, we should do it every single day. Yes, because we need to know that we are close to the Lord and we know, need to know everybody else that around us that we are close to the Lord and let him shine through us. Can you do it? Yes, we can. Church, let's pray. Kiddos, pray with me. Dear Lord, thank you for reminding us that we are in your image. Help us to draw closer to you every day, allowing us to be an example to others. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Okay. Y'all have a great day. scripture reading for today comes from Genesis 1, 26 and 27. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Well, we're starting a new series this morning. Uh, it's titled The Human Nature Series. And we're going to be talking about every week human versus something. This morning, we're going to be talking about human versus machine. All right? It's going to be like Terminator a little bit. Next week, we're talking about human versus zombie. Yep, so show up for, you know, three for three. Uh, The week after that, I think we're talking about human versus avatar, and then we're going to wrap it up with human versus God. And what we're really discussing here is the image that we were created in versus the image that we tend sometimes to live in. Uh, But about images. Images are amazing. Without words, a single image can tell a complete story. So let me show you a few examples. Here's our first image here. It might be hard to see for some people in the back, but it looks like, it looks like a horn. It is a horn. That's what it is. That you can squeeze and it makes a noise. And the sign on it, can you read that? It says, don't. <laughs> and so I'm guessing that the shop owner here has probably heard enough of this specific horn. Just don't. Don't horn, all right? The next picture we have here, we have this cat. This, this picture reminds me a lot of how I felt this morning going to church, you know. I went outside, probably did not agree with the snow, and it came right back. For those of you watching online, where's that camera? There you are. For those, oh, it's pointing over here. For those of you watching online, if you did that this morning, that's okay. We still love you. The next image we have here, we've got, we've got a bike in some cement. It seems in this image that a grown adult was riding a bike. That's an adult bike. All right, it's not a kid bike. A grown adult was riding a bike and seemed to have come across some wet cement. The thing about this picture that disturbs me most is that the person got off the bike and instead of walking in kind of the dirt area, just continued to walk through the wet cement. It was a tough day. This last picture here, somebody say, aw. Aw, you guys, some of you guys know this picture. Uh, this is a mom at her son's graduation. and uh, You can just see the pride in her eyes, how proud she is of her son. And 
all the years that she thinks about of sleepless nights and hard work to get him to this point, to send him out into the world. Images are powerful. They tell a story. And you might not realize this, but your life was meant to tell a story. Your existence was intended to be an image that reveals truth. However, in the life that we live, uh, sometimes we project the wrong image out into the world. In the beginning of our Bibles, in the book of Genesis, uh, we read in the first 11 chapters about this struggle for identity for the human uh, the human race, this struggle, this great war going on as, as we struggle against uh, the deception to find out what image that we were created in and trying to live into that image. We see human nature on full display. We see how human nature was supposed to be in creation, and then we see how it is corrupted. Painted in grand images, we go from the beauty of creation in chapter 1 and chapter 2 to the fall in chapter 3, but at the end of chapter 1 and chapter 2, we see the great uh, crescendo or the climax of creation as humans are created by God. We read in verse 26, Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. At the very peak of the creation story, we see God instilling his image in humans, in us. An image that tells a story. Our lives, our very existence was intended to reveal something about God. We were meant to reflect the image uh, to and for the world around us. This calling is built into our creation. It's often referred to as the Imago Dei, which just means the image of God. Author uh, Carmen Joy Imes in her book, Being God's Image, describes the Imago Dei in this way. God's image is not something we bear, it's something we are. I love that. God's image is not something we bear, it's something we are. Although our status as God's image may lead to certain actions, image is not something we do, but who we are. Just soak that in. So often we have these corrupted images of our human nature that don't line up with what God says about us. And from this image, we are called to do something. Here's what the verse says. Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. We were made in God's image so that we could rule over God's creation as God's representatives in this world. We must be careful not to define rule and authority uh, from our uh, most negative understanding or our most negative experience. Remember, we were to rule creation in the same manner that God would rule creation, revealing and reflecting godly characteristics into the world. This is actually how the human nature was supposed to be. This is what humanity was supposed to be, true humanity. It's in our created nature to be image bearers, but as many of us find out the hard way, this is not something that we can do on our own. We must get this right. It's from our image that we were created in that comes the good that we do. It's the image that we were created in first. We were created in the image of God so that we can take care of the world around us. And we see in this creation account a critical piece of what that means. The DNA of human nature is relational, right? We are relational beings. We are connected to God, and we are connected to each other. We, together, the church, are the image of God together. To bear his image as a church body, as a community of faith. To work with each other, to take care of each other, to be in relationship, to help each other out. Uh, is, the, is the definition of our true human selves. 
bearing the image of God for each other. Who we are meant to be and how we are supposed to act is supposed to be rooted in our connection with God. The only way for us to continually project that image onto the world is if we abide closely with Jesus. And Jesus even speaks about this in Scripture. We read in John 15, 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. And some of us may feel like we go through every day doing nothing. Are you abiding in him? Would be my question. Do you abide in him daily? Is he your source? Is good creation of who we are uh, then transfers into what we do to build our human nature? This is key. Keep this in mind because quickly, humanity as we read in the beginning of Genesis was deceived and might even still be deceived into thinking something different about who God is and therefore thinking something different about who we are. And the way Satan works is so clever because he just twists it just slightly, so subtly twists it uh, that it looks right, but it's so wrong until we have the wrong image of who we are and who God is. So we read, when Adam and Eve are deceived in the Garden of Eden, Uh, what happens? Right after that, what happens? Shame. They hide. They hide from each other. I was getting worried. Are y'all reading the Bible reading plan? We're in Genesis. Come on now. They hid, right? Hiding from each other, and then they hid from God, and then God did that whole thing. He's God. He's like, where are you? (laughs) He knows where you are, right? But they hid. They hid their image. They were hiding their image from each other. They were hiding the image that they were created. And even from God, they were hiding. They are ashamed. Satan's goal is to weaken the trust and the integrity that we have with our creator. To compromise human nature. To disrupt our ability to reflect the image that we were created. Satan gives a different image of who God is. And we fell for it. So go back to the original intent of human nature. We were created in the image of God to be relational, to be connected, so that we can rule and take care of creation, so that we can produce good fruit, good works. But here's what Satan did. He switched it. Here's where the lie happens. If you do good works, if you produce, then then you have value. And only then do you have value. Only if you work, only if you produce, then you have value. The first says We were made in the image of God first. That is our value. And from that, so that we can do good works, Satan says, you do good works to get your value. And sometimes we fall into that trap. He just flipped it around. You guys remember math? Some of it. Do you remember taking math class? Yeah, be in there partially for some of us, right? For those of you who are in math classes now, someone explained to me, because I just thought of it in the first service, what is PIMDAS? Parentheses, exponents, multiply, divide, add, subtract. That's the order in which we look at an equation for those of us who do that every day, right? Look at an equation and then we go parentheses first and then if there's an addition, we do that or subtraction, we do that last, right? But if you do it in the wrong order, you get the wrong answer. And this is how I see Satan working. He does PIMDAS a little bit backwards. It's like SIMDAP or something like that. (laughs) I don't know. However you want to mix it up and say it is how he does it. And he deceived us. And it gets the wrong answer every single time. You have to get it in the right order. We have the image of God first so that we can do good works. Not we do good works so that we have value. Amen? that land? As long as it landed for like two, I'm good. (laughs) So when we have the wrong image, then we often place that wrong image, not only on ourselves, but on others as well. Uh, How many of you fall into the trap when you go to a restaurant, maybe after church and the service is subpar, Uh, maybe your drink didn't get filled up fast enough, maybe the food was terrible, the service was terrible, and then you start to assign value to that waiter based on their performance, right? We do that. That's on a 
Uh, that's on a very serious scale, but we do that all throughout life. We look at the president of a company and we assign more value to the president of a company than we do to a homeless person on the street. We assign one incredible value while uh, writing the other one off completely based entirely on what they produce. In a sense, we've been made like machines. Machines created to do things, and that's what's important. Uh, we, uh, humanity has been made this one giant assembly line, uh, just producing, and if we produce, then we have value. If we get things done, then we have purpose. We fall into the trap of being defined by what we do and what we produce. In other words, we believe the lie that our value is only connected to what we can produce and what we can make. And if that is true, then the most important thing that we could possibly do is just churn out product and continue to work and do more and more and more, whether that be achievements or well-behaved kids or a full bank account. This is what we often strive for. How many people... Uh, when they retire or even become empty nesters, find themselves floundering, uh, wondering about uh, their purpose. What am I going to do? Because their entire careers and parenting has been based on producing and doing something. And now there's nothing left to produce when you're retired. Uh, If you're not careful, you can sink into depression or worse because they believe that their value come from production. They're somehow without value now. But our image is first to be a child of God. And then from that, we do good works. We've gotten the cart before the horse. We've screwed up PEMDAS. And so many of us, because we have switched the two ideas, uh, we feel like we're broken. And we don't have any purpose because we're broken. We treat ourselves and others like machines. If they don't produce, if we don't produce, then we're broken and it's over. And we struggle mightily when life gets hard. Because what, you, what, what do you do with a broken machine? But what if you can't? You just throw it away. Some of us have bought TVs in the past five to ten years. If that thing breaks, there's nobody. There, there, the TV repairmen, I don't see those people anymore. It's just broken. It goes from like a 5,000 or however. <laughs> I'm not buying that TV. Don't worry. <laughs> a, a big number price TV to Nothing. And it turns into something that you're really hurting your back over as you put it into the dumpster because it is worth nothing anymore. It's broken. That's how we treat ourselves sometimes. So many of us, we go through life like machines, trying desperately to produce so that you have value, trying desperately to prove that you are worth love, trying desperately to show others that you have purpose, fearful that if you trip up, if you mess up, if something goes wrong, then you just get thrown to the wayside, into the dumpster of life. This image has corrupted our lives. It's especially dangerous when it corrupts a whole group of people. We see this happen in Genesis 11 with the events of the Tower of Babel. Here was God's command to Adam and Eve when he told them uh, to go. This was Adam and Eve's sort of commissioning. In uh, Genesis 1.28, he said, God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. And then just 10 chapters later, humanity has this to say in response to God's command. They said to each other, come, let's make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They used brick instead of stone and tar from water. Then they said, come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens so that we may make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we'll be scattered over the face of the earth in complete contrast to what God had just said just 10 chapters before. The image of God is an identity based on making a name for God, not making a name for ourselves as his representatives in the world. But humanity, they've now decided that they have to make a name for themselves based on what they can produce. The example being this great tower, it can be any numbers, uh, any number of things in your life that is a great tower. Uh, but church, we weren't created simply to produce. We were never meant to receive value based on what we can make. We were created to proclaim, and that also takes work. Sometimes we, we might feel a little bit allergic to work, like work is a bad thing. 
Work was there before the fall. It was the work and the toil that came as a consequence of the fall. But we were created to proclaim, not just produce, to make God's name great because he's the creator of all things. This is something that the people in the Tower of Babel have lost. They were building to make a name for themselves. They forgot that they were the ones that have value in their very being, and they didn't have to prove that to anybody. They were made in the image of God. You are the image bearers of God in your very creation. Live out of that. That's the starting point, the image that we were created in. Then produce and rule and do good works and proclaim the goodness of God like we were called to do. And when life trips you up and your production goes down and you don't meet your quotas, don't live into the lie that you are loved any less. You're not. Living as the image of God, it will be scary. It will include challenges. Many times it will require intense amounts of faith and courage. It will often require you to take up your cross, to die to yourself. That's why it's crucial that we focus on that proclaiming side, making God's name great. And so if you have your Bibles with you, if you will, open up to Psalm chapter 72. Let me just get there. I'll give you some time to get there. Some of us are kind of accustomed to the pastor saying, open up your Bibles and then instantly reading and then you feel left behind. I'll give you some time. Go ahead. Turn to chapter 72 of the Psalms. If you have your phone, you can go there too, I guess. That's okay. Who's there? Chapter 72? Nice. Now, I told you wrong. Just go back one chapter. Chapter 71. That was on me, okay? My bad. We're going to be in verse 14. That's where we're going to start. You can read more of it if you'd like later on today. I'll just read 14 through 18. But I will keep on hoping for your help. I will praise you more and more. I will tell everyone about your righteousness. All day long I will proclaim your saving power. Though I am not skilled with words, I will praise your mighty deeds, O sovereign Lord. I will tell everyone that you alone are just. O God, you have taught me from my earliest childhood, and I constantly tell others about the wonderful things you do. Now that I am old and gray, do not abandon me, O God. Let me proclaim your power to this new generation. Somebody say amen. Let me proclaim your power to this new generation, your mighty miracles to all who come after me. I love this verse. It reminds me, um, and I hope it's a reminder for you too, that so often when, when we're down in life and we're going through a struggle and we feel like we're doing nothing and uh, life is moving slowly and poorly, uh, sometimes all it takes is somebody else's proclamation somebody else is proclaiming of what the Lord has done in your life. And so my next step for you, my challenge for you is uh, when I'm praying, I want you to be thinking and asking the Lord for him to put uh, somebody's face or somebody's name in your head. And then when you get that name or face during the service, maybe if it's somebody in here, I want you immediately to go to them. But go to them and tell tell somebody uh, something that God did for you in your life. Uh, some way that God changed your life. So as I'm praying, uh, be thinking of somebody to go proclaim to. Amen? I was just thinking this past week, uh, I had lunch with Mikey. I was having a terrible day on Thursday, and I got lunch with Mikey. And uh, Mikey, if you've ever had lunch with Mikey, all that man does is proclaim. Uh, And so he was proclaiming some of the works that uh, God's doing in his life and in his family, man, and it uplifted me so much. And I hope that you can do that for somebody else. Who's going to take on this next step? Raise your hand. I'm going to keep you accountable. All right, here we go. Only the brave. Oh, yeah, let's do this. I'll pray. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for today. Thank you so much for Sunday. Lord, we are so thankful for all that you have done. All that you have done for this church. All that you have done for the members of this church. Lord Jesus, we thank you uh, that you are good. And I pray today you would give us the courage to proclaim your goodness to others as an uplifting Lord Jesus. That Lord, you created us not simply to produce, 
but to proclaim. You created us in your image so that we can go proclaim. And so, Lord, I pray that you would remind us of that. And even now, would you put a, a name or a face just in the minds of those that are here and give them the courage to go and talk to that person and tell them of your goodness because you are so good. Your goodness is endless, Lord Jesus. And we thank you for the small portion that you give in our lives. Lord Jesus, we love you. It's in your name. Amen. So even during this last worship song, uh, if, so, if the Lord gave you somebody, go to them. Tell them about the Lord's goodness. After the worship song, you can do the same thing. If it's somebody in your family, I, just, I pray that you don't delay. Don't have any delayed obedience with this. Just go. Just go tell somebody about what the Lord has done in your life. The altars are open for anyone who wants to pray as well. Let's stand as we sing. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and oh my soul, worship His only name. Sing like never before, in all my soul, I worship Your. The sun comes out, it's a new day dawning, it's time to sing your song again, whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be seen.
worship your holy name. Sing like never before, and all my soul, I worship your holy name. Amen. You may be seated. I'm going to invite the ushers to come forward as we continue in worship with the giving of our tithes and offerings. And I'll just pray for our offering. Uh, Lord Jesus, thank you that we get to give back to you. Uh, Lord, would you bless everything placed in the offering bag? Would you bless everyone here? In Jesus' name, amen. Some things going on in the life of the church. Uh, Tonight's membership class has been rescheduled for Sunday, January 28th. Uh, Apparently, it's a little bit cold out there, okay? Uh, So we're changing the date uh, to another date, which is in your bulletin. Uh, It's going to be in room 125 and 127 from 6 to 8, January 28th. Uh, If you're interested in joining the church and taking a membership class or even finding out uh, even more about us, I'd encourage you to go to this class and just see see what you can see. Uh, Learn a little bit more about what we do here and who we are. I'd love to invite you to that class. Uh, Also, if you're a first-time guest here, please don't forget to grab your first-time guest gift under the really bright light bulb with a really nice lady who has a really cool gift just for you. Don't forget to grab that before you leave if you're a first-time guest. Uh, we're doing a Camp Nova fundraiser uh, throughout all the way up until camp, which is coming up so fast. It's going to be awesome. I'm pumped for Camp Nova. It's the 100 for 100. We're asking 100 people, uh, families, or groups to give $100 up until camp to raise money for Uh, camp this year. So if that's something that you want to be a part of or something that you'd like to relay back to your uh, uh, grow group uh, or to your family, I'd invite you to do that. Um, Be a part of something really cool. And then uh, we've got a Sages of All Ages gathering Thursday, January 25th from 10 a.m. to noon. Uh, If you don't know anything about the Sages of All Ages, there's some more information in the bulletin uh, or you can come talk to me afterwards. I'll, I'll give you some more information about that. Uh, So, as we go, will you stand and receive this benediction? Since uh, since Josiah was born, people will come up and they'll say, oh, he looks so much like you, Hayden, or oh man, he looks so much like Liz. And uh, it just hit me as we were worshiping that last song, that's that's how God uh, made us. In that, I want to walk around and have somebody say, oh, you look just like your father. You, You represent God so well. I pray that we would all all, uh, do that as his church, as we go out into the world uh, and just reflect his image so well that people out there see him in us. Amen? Amen. Go in his peace today.